Hi Facebook world, Shannon Wooten here. I normally announce when I'm going to go live, but it has been a crazy bananas week and I couldn't be happier or more grateful about it. So if you are out there and you are watching with me now, please send me a heart. Please send me some hand emojis. Heather, hello, welcome. Let me know that you are out there watching with me, here with me, ready to communicate, have a lovely conversation. Hi, Mary, welcome. And where are you tuning in from? If you are a newbie and this is your very, very, very first time, Mary, hey, queen. Girl, I need to get me a crown. I have a scepter. My scepter is up there. Can you see it? Mary, can you see it? Hi, Samantha. Hi, Paula. Oh, my God. Can you see my scepter? I love it. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. So, yes, if you are tuning in for the very first time, let me know where you're tuning in from. Say, hey, I'm a newbie. Announce yourself. Would love to meet you. Samantha, hello. I love you. Shannon, welcome, girl. Shannon shaved a shot of her head today. Looks dope. Thank you. Mary says my scepter is dope. Thank you. I love it, too. I love my scepter. I need a crown. I have Maleficent horns, as I'm sure you can imagine. I kind of think that those are my crown. That's more my speed. But I think I need a black crown. Hey, girl. Hey, what's up? So again, throw me some heart emojis. Hi, Holly. Let me know that you're out there and you're watching with me. I haven't been live in a hot minute, so I really wanted to come and talk about a doozy, a doozy of a live. Send me some heart emojis. Let me know you're out there and where you're tuning in from. If you're a newbie, say, I'm a newbie, where you're tuning in from as well. Oh, Mary, a black crystal crown. Yes. OMG, I need to Google this. Black Crystal Crown. Samantha, newbie but already obsessed with you. Samantha, I love you. God, I love you so much. And if you are catching this on the replay, replay, blah, 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 blah. later on today, give me a hashtag replay. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Sydney, Australia, baby, down under. Do you get annoyed when people do that? I feel like I would probably get annoyed when people are like, down under, good day, mate, right? I'd be like, no, don't, just stop, right? <laughs> Patricia, hey! Shannon is from St. Pete. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So guys, Jen, welcome. It's been a crazy bananas week. Give me some hearts or some fire or some hand emojis or some like, ugh, or some face emojis if it's been a crazy week for you too because it's been crazy over here, right? Zay, crazy in a good way, but you know, just crazy nonetheless. So I wanted to come live today and talk about, will the real you please stand up? How many of you out there heard that and thought of Slim Shady? With a real Slim Shady, please stand up. With a real Slim Shady, please stand up. Love me some Eminem, can't handle it. Tina, welcome. And I wanted to have this conversation with you all. Hi, Melissa. Because I think, Shannon says, it's been crazy, but I love it. I know, it's been so crazy. It's getting hotter in here now. The sun's coming in. I'm like getting sweaty pits. I'm like, Ugh. Melissa, hello, my friend. But I wanted to have this conversation because a few reasons. Number one, um, you know, hi, Danielle, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, you know, it's not glamorous to admit that we need help, right? Shannon, yes, Eminem is legit. I love Eminem. Seriously, I love it. And a lot of us are not familiar with asking for support and for help. And we see that as some sort of detriment or something to be shameful about ourselves. Hi, Abigail. Welcome. When really, when we get help, helps us to realize who we really are. And it's, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I've experienced, Shannon says, needing help is human. It is so human. Hi, Erica. Welcome. And I wanted to come live and say, it's okay to need help. I want to put this out there. If you're watching this now and you have some sort of, I don't know, stigma around like, I can't possibly need help. I can't possibly have support. I just want to put this out there. It's okay to need help. Sucking and not doing anything about it sucks. Don't suck more. Yeah, totally. God, I love that, Melissa. Mm -mm -mm. My cousin's on. Hi, Nick. I love you. So I wanted to come and have this conversation, as I said, because it's Mental Health, Aware Mental health Awareness Month. Blah, blah. And I think it's a very important conversation, number one. Number two, I'm a life coach, so I love helping people for a living. And I have my own life coach who helps me and helps me create awareness in my life every single week, every month. Lisa, girl, what's up? Hi, Donna. So, Erica, don't suck more. I know. Melissa, that was funny. Francis, welcome. Hi, beautiful. How did I know that I needed help? Well, first of all, 
I probably needed help a lot longer than I was aware that I needed help, right? And I knew that I needed help when I was going through my struggle with infertility. It was like that straw that broke the camel's back that was like, pfft, like blew my world apart. I was like, what the fuck is actually happening here? I didn't know who I was anymore. And Francis, oh yes, Eminem is awesome sauce. Yes. And I was, I started to become aware that I needed help because I wasn't able to embody who I felt in my heart that I was. I've always been this like sprite of a human, like sometimes a little too much to take and sometimes I don't want anything to do with anyone, like this kind of, you know, harmony between two worlds. But I always felt like I was, I was just destined to live a big life. I have a lot of like energy and fire in me. So it's like, ah, I gotta get that out somewhere. And when I was going through my struggle with infertility, I went into a very long, like five years long. I wasn't aware that it was a depression. I wasn't clinically diagnosed, but it probably was. I had all kinds of thoughts about myself, about my life, about it. Just never ending row of suck. It's just like, I sucked, my life sucked, I can never get it back on track. It was actually running away from me. And I was like trying endlessly to keep up, and I couldn't. But I wasn't able to embody in that moment who I felt I was. That energy had left me. It was like, it, it, it ran away from me and I couldn't get it back. I also wasn't able to change how I had begun to respond to things when they would go wrong. I would become so engrossed in it that I would become almost obsessed with it. And I would feel like I was stuck and I was trapped. And no one could reach me. I couldn't even reach me. And I couldn't fully celebrate or enjoy or even see. Like I was living my life every freaking day, but I couldn't see all the good I had in it. All I could see, hi Melissa, welcome. All I could see was that I was stuck. I was stuck and I couldn't admit to anyone, let alone myself, I didn't have the awareness that I needed help. I needed help. And it became this scenario where I put on this like song and dance of like who Shannon was in front of other people. I went to work every day. It was like, I'm getting up, putting my underwear on, brushing my teeth, deodorant, go to work, talk to people, go to the bathroom and cry, come back to my desk, sit on a conference call, possibly cry on the conference call, go to the bathroom and cry, come back, go to go home, drive in my car, cry, come home, yell at my husband, scream, scream, scream at my husband, didn't know why I was fucking screaming, scream, hate my life, go to bed, and then be awake. You would think I'd be so exhausted, but I was just awake. I was like... Oh my God, my life sucks. Is this my life? Is this where I'm at? And I felt like I was trapped. I couldn't talk to anybody about it. I didn't know what to do. And I realized in that moment, I wasn't being myself. Myself, after several years of being in it, like I said, five years of being in it, I wasn't able to see that I wasn't being myself. And so I didn't know what to do. I'm fast forwarding through a lot of shit here. But I ended up finding a life coach online. And I didn't know what it was at the time. I was like, I don't even know what the hell this is. This girl says, this girl has an amazing energy. Plug me into her. I want some of that. I didn't even know who the hell she was. Plug me into her ass and give me that energy. So I reached out to her and I was like, I don't know what this is. She and I had initial consultation and I had all these feelings about being helped. She doesn't fucking know me. What's she going to tell me about me? All she wants is my money. I was having this weird argument with myself. Uh, you reached out to her. She's just telling you what she does. Why are you arguing about that? This is crazy. This is weird. And I ended up going forth with it. I ended up hiring my very first life coach. Fast forward a year later, I ended up going through a year long training program to become my own life coach. Two years later after that, I developed my own clientele of life coaching. I'm launching programs. Ta-da! I needed help. And now that I am a life coach, I have the awareness of all the steps that I've gone through. And I realized that I wasn't being myself. But I wasn't being myself for most of my life. Yes, that, that situation, that, that infertility was the straw that broke the camel's back. But for most of my life, I wasn't being myself. I wasn't allowing me to get help. I wasn't allowing me to be really energetic. Melissa, you need help. We all do. Yeah. So I want to invite you guys, if you're out there, 
and you're watching this and you're seeing a pattern for yourself of I'm interested in talking to someone, but I'm not. I'm interested in life coaching, but I don't reach out. I'm interested in this program, but I don't dive in. I'm interested in picking someone's brain and I won't and I don't. Take yourself, just calm yourself with me for a second. Take a deep breath in. Oh, release it all out because that's heavy shit. It's heavy shit and you can admit that to yourself. It's okay. But take yourself back to when you were a kid. And I want you to just think about this for a second. Were you the kid that said, I'll do it on my own. I don't want your help. I'll put all these blocks together wrong. I don't care if I am coloring outside the lines. I'll do it on my own. Think about that. Were you the kid that was embarrassed or ashamed when things went wrong, so you hit it? Right? Like if you got it, your test handed back in school, you put your arm around it immediately because you didn't want anyone else to see what your grade was. What if they did better than me? They're smarter than me. Or you didn't tell your parents that you had a bad grade. They just found out. Or maybe you were like me and you changed the grade on your report card and you forged it. I mean, who does that? I did. I did that. Or maybe you don't ask for support because you don't want to bother people, right? You were the kid that was like, this person is picking on me at school. This teacher is making me feel less than. So you don't go to mom, dad, brother, or sister. You just internalized it. You just kept it in. Erica, you stinker. I know my mom was so mad at me, but yeah, that's what I did right? Think back to those moments in your childhood where you weren't allowing yourself to get help, where you were too embarrassed. You were too ashamed. Jennifer, what if I was all of the above? Hi, Jennifer. How do you think I came to these? I was all of the above too, my girl. I'll do it on my own. Don't fucking bother me. I don't need you. Mary Allison, that was me. So much shame in my childhood. Yes, me too. Struggled so hard. Were embarrassed. Hid. Didn't want anyone to know that, that they hurt your feelings. Didn't want to just sit at that table with that group of boys or girls and feel like you belonged. Not feel like you were less than or, or unintelligent or not strong or not pretty enough. Not qualified. Not in the in crowd. Think about that. Back to when you were a kid where you weren't allowing yourself to just be you. To stand up. Because you needed help. You needed support but you shamed yourself for it. You forbade yourself for receiving it, to get it. And I'm not saying that it's bad or terrible to want to be independent and do things on your own. I'm wildly independent, and I'm assuming half, if not all of you watching this are wildly independent too. Energy connects energy, so just say. You can be independent. You can be successful. You can be sexy as fuck. You can be capable. And you can still need help. Like I said, I have my own life coach. I'll probably never not have a life coach. So now that you've taken that little trip and trips with me down memory lane to where you were a child, and you have at least some sort of assertion about who you were, or who you weren't at that point in your life, and the, the patterns that you have, now look at who you are as an adult. Any similarities? I'll do it on my own. I don't need your help. That's fine. Whatever. I'm not going to even delegate it out because it's just better if I do it on my own. You know what? Now I'm pissed. I'm pissed because you didn't even offer to help. What about I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. This went wrong. It didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. So I just won't tell anyone and they won't have to know. I won't tell anyone that I'm going for this job opportunity because if I don't get it, then, then I won't have to be embarrassed or ashamed. I'll just know. And that'll be okay. Erica, I've gotten better as asking most of the time. Hi, Julie, hi. What about, I'm so desperately alone. I'm so sad. My feelings are hurt. I can't talk to my husband. I want to reach out to my mom, but I won't. What about that? Not, I won't ask for support. I'll be fine. It's fine. How many of you, your favorite word is fine? My husband's like, don't tell me it's fine, because I know fine's bad. 
Melissa, that's such a hard thing to work through, not wanting to share myself. Yes, right. If you're not sure about the synchronicities of, you know, I can't have help because then, then people will see me a different way. I can't possibly be independent. I can't possibly be confident. I can't possibly be a badass. Because if I ask for help, and that means I'm codependent and I'm weak, I'm a wet blanket, sure. If that's what you assign it as meaning, then that's absolutely what it will mean. Right? The idea here is not to make you feel bad. Because it can do that. Vanessa, Jennifer, it's fine. I'm fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Move along. Everything is totally fine. Just be in the bedroom cursing your name and punching that pillow. Calling you every single name in the book. Right? So, hi, Jen. Welcome. The idea is not to make you feel bad. The idea is not to push you down this memory lane and have you wallow in self-pity. That is certainly not the idea. The idea is for you to see yourself. See yourself as how truly capable, successful, wildly independent you can be and still ask for help. It's just the way you're looking at help. And it's just the way you're forbidding you to be yourself. Hi, Erica. Welcome. So the idea is to see where are you with getting support? Where are you with allowing yourself to receive support in this world? It doesn't have to be from people. It could even be in your endeavors. How are you allowing yourself to grow your business? How are you investing in yourself? Or if it is relationship, are you letting your partner know what it is that you want and what it is that you need? Not setting the expectation of if you don't do this, it's game over. No, allowing your voice to have volume, allowing your heart to receive. Shannon, it takes real strength and courage to admit and get help when you need it. Yes, it does. Jennifer, I don't know how to ask for help without it feeling like I'm begging. Ah, oh, yeah. Jennifer, opportunity is to reframe this. The opportunity is to, to see that you are actually equating, I need help with begging. Instead of, I need help, period. It's the emotion you have tied to it. The idea here is to see how you isolate, where you don't allow yourself to be heard. You don't allow yourself to take up space. You don't allow yourself to say, I can be embarrassed and ashamed and that's okay because those are just emotions and emotions don't have to run the show. And that's a whole other thing to ingest, right? Feelings can be so big. They can feel like they are permanent and last forever. I know. I get it. I totally do. But they don't have to run the show. If you isolate, it's because you choose to put yourself there. It's because you choose to not allow yourself to receive connection and support. And acknowledge that that's a part of you. If you have it that in order for you to be strong, capable, and successful, then you need to do everything on your own, then that's who you're going to be. But if you have it that the real version of me, the person that is, please stand up with the real version of you, please stand up, is I'm strong, I'm capable, I'm successful, and sometimes I need help. And that's okay. Hi, Danny. Welcome. The idea here is to see the things that you want to change. Because I can tell you, as I said at the very beginning, when I was in what I consider my infertility depression, I knew without a shadow of a doubt I wanted it all to change. I didn't fucking like that. It's like, this is not cool. I feel like I am at an energy loss all day, every day, and then I can't sleep. What's this? If I'm tired like this all the time, I should be sleeping my life away. I wanted things to change, but I just didn't know how. And so I decided that the story that I'd created in my head, which was, I'll do it on my own, that means I'm strong and independent. Or that if things go wrong, I need to be ashamed and I need to hide and isolate. Or I need to try and fix this error before anyone notices because they'll judge me. Or I can't possibly ask mom, dad, brother, sister, husband, friend, random people on the internet for support because then that means I'm needy and I'm putting a burden on them. 
I decided that the things that I wanted to change was I wanted to rewrite the story of all of those things. I do things on my own. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get embarrassed and ashamed, but oh, that's just what happens. It's just an emotion. Ah, I'll probably get embarrassed and ashamed in five seconds from now. I don't have to fix all of the things before anyone notices. And I can ask for support. I don't have to believe and expect and demand that I will always get it. But the version of me that is real and that stands up for herself and that is capable, strong, successful, independent, and a badass and vulnerable and equally strong in this world allows herself to ask for what she wants and stands on the potential that she will get it. And sometimes she won't. Erica, ah, needy. Jennifer, okay, so I have a real life, real time situation. She is an example that I'm currently going through. Jennifer, I love that you want to air that. I would highly suggest you to message me. I like to keep all of people that I communicate with and their information confidential, just for your own privacy, because I care. Jen, I need to hear this today. Yes, we all need to hear this every day. Sometimes I'm like, damn, I need some help. And I forget. And I'm a coach. And this is why I have my own coach. She's like, Shannon, you don't need to fix the world. I'm like, oh, Shannon, you're going to have bad days. I'm like, no. Shannon, it's okay to call your brother and say, I'm sorry I haven't reached out to you more, but I need your support and I'll do better. Right? Hi, Nikki, welcome. So the idea is to bring your subconscious to your conscious. Erica, word, tough day today. Needed this as well. Yeah. Woo, I love it. So the idea, like I said, is to bring your subconscious to your conscious. Who are you being about your life? What is your automatic behavior when you need help? Is your automatic behavior to be like, I'll do it on my own because that's what I'm supposed to do to be a strong woman. I mean, who the fuck said that? Who said that? I don't even know. Tell me if you find it. Quote it. Send it to me. Who said that you can't be embarrassed and shame and keep it moving, sister? And be like, hey, that experience taught me. Now I'm stronger. Thank you. Put that in my hat. Learn something today. Who said that you can't have things go wrong? That you have to fix everything before anyone notices? Who said that you can't ask for what you want and know that sometimes you won't get it, but sometimes you will? It's about bringing those things you automatically do. I forbid myself to get help. I forbid myself to have things go wrong. I forbid myself to be seen and heard and forbid myself to be erred and flawed and also allow myself to be strong and wise and successful. It's about bringing those things that we have back here, these stories, and bringing them to the forefront and being like, oh yeah, I do that. I do that. And that's just the real me. Erica, I don't want to be caught being wrong so I'm not judged. Yeah, but guess who's judging you about being wrong, Erica? You. You're already judging you before anyone even gets a chance. Because then, then you might actually get support then you might actually get help. So I wanted to come live today and I wanted to share this with you guys because I feel like it's a really important topic. I feel like mental health is really important and I'm a life coach, I'm not a therapist. Erica, me, I know, cause you're smart, I love you. So I wanted to come in and talk about this, not only because mental health awareness, because I feel like we look at it as our perfect self needs to be our real self but really our real self is already imperfect and perfect at the same time. So this version is struggling to be like the circle where a square should be. And this version is, hey, this is just me. This is just me. And sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need help seeing that in ourselves. Sometimes we need help seeing that you are already perfectly imperfect exactly the way that you are. It's wonderful, it's glorious step in the waters feels wonderful. Sometimes we forget, like I said, sometimes I forget. So it's to see where you need help, but you're not taking it, right? It's to see what, to see who you are, but you're not allowing yourself to be. And if we're constantly cutting ourselves off before we get the chance to flourish and bloom, to show ourselves to the world, then the world is going to take you at face value, my friend. 
If they think that you're the person that doesn't need help, they think that you're the person that's closed off, they think that you have a judgment about everything or whatever it is you're putting out there, they're only leading by your example. They're only believing what you're telling them. You train people how to treat you. And if you want people to treat you as being perfectly imperfect, flawed, incapable, strong, and sexy, badass, successful, I can do it on my own, but sometimes I need help, then you have to start walking the walk and talking the talk, my friend. And it is, I know it sounds like, wow, how the hell do I do that? It takes time and effort and energy and commitment and consistency. I have a life coach. Like I said, I will have one probably for the rest of my life. Because sometimes I fall off track too. So I wanted to come live and share this with you all because I think it's an important topic. I think it's important to remember that sometimes we need help. And that's the realest version of us. We all need help. And pretending like we don't, I don't even know. It's just like sweeping something under a huge ass rug that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And not allowing ourselves to be ourselves. You, I imagine, know how strong and how capable you are. You, I imagine, because you're watching this, and like I said, energy attracts energy, knows that you are meant for such a big life. You know that you are deserving of equal relationships, of abundant wealth. Erica, it takes a damn village. It sure does, girl. Shannon, because you are, you're awesome and give badass vibes messages. Thank you, Shannon, my namesake. I love you. So I wanted to come and remind you of this, guys. It's super important. Allow yourself to flourish. Allow yourself to be the phoenix. Allow yourself to take up all the motherfucking space in your life by realizing that you're flawed. And it's cool. It's fine. It's fine if you say it is. But if you keep convincing yourself it's not, and you keep trying to pretend that you can keep sweeping things under this rug, that rug's going to be taller than a building. And you're going to be going, how the hell did that get so high? And then when do I get to be me in this life? Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't. As long as you keep telling yourself you don't. But the answer is you do when you say you do. All right, guys. I love you. I love you so damn much. Give me some hearts below if you like this video. Share it with your friends if you feel like there is something in this message that they will find useful. Something that they need to hear. Or something you just want to freaking share with the world. Because you are good and giving like that. Also, as a reminder, there are, how many days? Looking at a calendar. One, two, three. Three days. For those of you that are interested in signing up for Shadow Work Academy, blah, 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 Shadow Work Academy, which by the way, subconscious and conscious, talk all about it in Shadow Work Academy. Going to go deep into that shit. There are three days to join the wait list for 2019. 2018 is already sold out. Although, there are two VIP coaching spots for 2018, so if you want them, message me now. That closes on Sunday. Otherwise, message me to join the waitlist for 2019. There is a small deposit. Private message me, please. I will happily give you all the details. Otherwise, I love you. I love you so damn much. Be good to yourself. Allow the real you to please stand up. And if you need some help, allow yourself to get supported and see you too. Peace.